forward, you follow me. If I hesitate, push me. If they, I am a kill me, avenge me. If I am a traitor, you kill me. Gangsters, cops, and politicians get ready to rock. We're on a mission. Each one of us shares our own vision. Welcome back. It's your host, Gabe Morales. Before I start, I'd just like to say I really appreciate all the love and support you guys have given me since this channel started. I hope that you enjoy these latest episodes on the Nuest Familia and that you learn something new. I always try to make sure that it is mostly legit info. I do my homework and research, but occasionally I do make a mistake or two. So I, I do appreciate when you guys bring that to my attention tactfully and respectfully. As you know, I also often end with some life lessons and share a little personal note on my perspective on these subjects. There was Bobby Silent Lopez out of San Juan. This guy's family was very much involved in the NF going back to the early days. His father was Robert Lopez Campa, a.k.a. Old Man, a.k.a. Arrow, who was born in 1948. I understand he was, was NF by the late 1970s. I believe with a B number, but ended up coming back with a C number of 22294. He was known as being a major dope dealer and was in and out of custody for many years. Silent was involved in the Northern Structure in the 1980s under D number 45352. Understand that he was soon made NF and had paroled to the streets of San Ho by September 1990. Understand that he immediately started putting in a lot of work, including multiple 187s, for which he was charged on a RICO case in 1992. He ended up being convicted and sent to death row on K number 76100. And he was housed in San Quentin for many years, known as being loyal to the federal faction, but is currently housed at Salinas Valley State Prison, where he is still known as being an NF shot caller. There was Eloy John Lopez, who I think may have been from East L.A. He was affiliated with the NF in the early 1970s under B number 37393. And I understand was eventually made an NF captain, a rank which he retained until he ended up messing with Babo Sosa's wife, Linda Bercero. Understand that Lopez was eventually killed, but his body never found. And that case will probably never be solved, as Babo has been dead for many years now. There was Ezequiel Conejo Lopez out of Gilwan. He was an NF by at least the mid-1970s under B number 70725 and was the brother-in-law of Black Bob Vasquez. Understand that his family came up with an idea in 1977 to make an NF corrido and put it on a 45 that was called El Mensaje de la Nuestra Familia. Understand that Conejo's sister, Caitlin, was actually the one who put up the money and organized that 45 being put out as propaganda for the NF. They ended up selling it at swap meets and wherever they could. However, it never was a really big seller. Understand they also sold t-shirts with the NF logo on it. But that business venture didn't go over very well either. Conejo was involved in multiple homicides, such as the murder of Flavio Garza. I understand that he was enemies of Pablo Pantera in the 1990s when he had D number 7605. He ended up getting released on that number, but then came back under P numbers in Paul 19893 and had long dropped out by then. There was Frank Pancho Lopez who I mentioned was from Lomita Mara in East L.A. He was not an original, but a very early NF member with A number 63547. He ended up getting released and then came back with B number 25343, but eventually became a hermit. 
There was Gonzalo Huero Lopez out of San Juan. He was an NF member in the early 70s under B number 3555. That's right, four fives. Understand that on July 2nd, 1972, he stabbed MA member B.B. Resendez, and for that hit, he was later murdered by the M.A., I believe by Ralph Mata. It was Greg Blinky A.P.W. Lopez out of San Juan, but I also show had ties to Gilroy. He was known in the structure in the 1980s under D number 56188 and remained active with the structure throughout the 1990s, but I understand was stripped by Chico Rose in 1998 and assaulted by his supporters. Gregory Lopez is mentioned in Operation Black Widow. And it is my understanding that he was one of the individuals that were trying to run the Nuestra Raza separate of the NF. He ended up being indicted in 1998 and given BOP number 02546-748. And I'm unsure what happened to him after 2006. There was Jesus E.K. Chuy Lopez out of Modesto. I show he was locked up in the Youth Authority in the early 90s, where he became an associate of the Northern Structure. He eventually became accepted as being a Nuestra Raza member and, I understand, was considered a leader at the Stanislaw County Jail in Modesto, where he led an assault on Ricardo Saldivar in June of 2006 and did CDC time under B numbers in Victor 54258, but I'm unsure what happened to him. There was Philip Gato Lopez out of Salas, but also show had ties to San Bernardino. He was NF in the 1970s under B number 66302. I show he was housed at CRC in 1974, thus has had an N number as in Nancy, and then came back under grand theft in 1975, whereby he was given B number 66302. He paroled in 1977, but caught an assault with a deadly weapon in 1977, and I heard was charged with introducing contraband, in this case a gun, into the Santa Clara County Jail in 1978. He ended up paroling in 1980, but got popped for dope in 1987, as well as 1989, whereby he was given E numbers in Edward 33226. I show he was in and out of custody in the 1990s and housed at DVI in 2003, when I lost track of him. There was a Ralph Flaco Lopez from San Juan. He was born on April 20th, 1952. I showed that he was NF in the late 1970s, but had DO'd and was killed on July 16th, 1982 at a Santa Clara County Jail work farm. I'm unsure who pulled that one off. There's a Raymond Lopez out of Tulare County. He is a relatively new NF member with A numbers in Apple and is a Nancy 4705. I show that he was housed at Pleasant Valley State Prison from 2019 to 2023 and is currently housed at Soledad. There was a Robert Perico Lopez. I show had ties to the San Gabriel Valley in Southern California as well as Ontario out in the IE in the 1970s under B number 50633. I show that he paroled in 1976 and I understand was listed as a hermit. But here's the kicker. I understand he was revalidated in the year 2008 under F numbers in Frank 33966 and was housed at Lancaster in 2012. And I'm unsure what happened to him after that. There was a Roberto Lopez. I'm unsure what barrio he claimed, but I show had CDC commitments from Kern County and Santa Clara County. He had C number 22294. And was documented as being NF in the late 1970s. I show that he was housed at Pelican Bay State Prison in 2012 to 2013. And I show he is currently housed at Solano State Prison at the age of 75 years old. There was a Richard Vachas Lopez Cordova out of San Juan. He was also a major dope dealer and may have been related to Bobby Sr. If so, he would have been the older brother. I show he was NF in the 1970s. Under B number 82531, and was also housed at Santa Clara County Jail in 1988, but I'm not sure what happened to him. There was Alfred Panzas Lopez Leva from the Chino Sinners. He was NF in the early 1970s under B number 14058, I believe for the attempted homicide of a Los Angeles police officer. I show that he was hit while he was housed in the L.A. County Jail on October 10, 1972 by La M. He survived his attack and went on to become an NF lieutenant and was known for organizing NF Carnales in the Chino West San Bernardino area. I believe he was part of the Babo Sosa faction and was murdered on January 11, 1978 by the NF. 
There was Jerry Chino Lord Gonzalez. I understand he was Nuestra Raza in the 1990s under J number 47914. Evidently, he put in enough work to become NF and at one time was housed at Pelican Bay C4. I understand he was moved to Corcoran, Chu in 2015 and has been housed for almost 10 years now at Salinas Valley State Prison. There was Rafael Capone Lazno at a San Fran Mission. I remember this guy very clearly. He was a Puerto Rican guy and well-respected with C number 73282. Understand that he had been Northern Structure throughout the 1980s, but was not validated until 1990. He ended up paroling in 2010, and I'm unsure what happened to him. There was David Flaco Lozoya, who I show had ties to Gilroy, San Jose, and Salinas, and was known as being an assassin in the late 1970s under B number 92935. He was put on trial for those homicides, as seen here, and given life without. I show he was housed at CMF Vacaville in 1978 and was housed at Corcoran Shoe for many years until he died in June of 2014. There was Daniel Taco Loyola at a sound home. He was an NF member in the mid-1970s, as seen here. I'm not sure what his B number was, but he had a DOB of 925.53, and I'm unsure what happened to him. It was Daniel Chicken Legs Losa out of the Chino Centers. He was at least an NF associate in the early 1970s under B number 38037 when he killed MA member or associate, depending on who you ask, Bobby Zapata on June 17, 1972 at CIM. As you recall, the California Institution for Men at that time housed many NF members, including Babo Sosa, and it was considered a headquarters for the NF. Understand that during the investigation of the assault on the Aranda brothers, it was learned that the AMA was trying to kill either Chicken Legs, a.k.a. Gangster, and or his brother, Ronnie Losa, who had C number 52759. Understand that Ronnie was off that C number by the year 2006, and I'm unsure what happened to the Losa brothers. There was Pascal Sr. Lozano, a.k.a. P-Dog, out of San Juan. He was born in 1953 and affiliated with the NF and rumored to have been involved in multiple homicides, but eventually cut ties with the NF. There was also Pascual Lozano Gutierrez Jr., who was affiliated with the NF in the 1990s under D number 58538. Understand that he was released on that number, but came back with a K number, 10829. There was also a Raul Peanut Lozano affiliated with the NF under B number 43862. And to keep it all in the family, there was Rudy, a.k.a. Little Peanut Lozano, who was a Northern Structure Maestro in the 1990s under D number 48862. And then there was Raymond Negro, a.k.a. Joker Lozano Perez, Paradez, who was at least an NF associate under D number 16536. He then got out on that number and I believe was popped for a burglary in 99, whereby he was given J number 46225 and was housed at San Quentin in 2001. Per Rick Cowboy Handel and many of those family members at one time in custody, they are all listed now as dropouts. There was Albert Littleman Lucero, who I show was out of Modesto, but also had ties to San Juan. He was a Northern Structure member or associate with V number 6713, and I show was housed at Tatsby Shoe in 2012. Then there was David Tripas Lucero, who has ties to Denver, as seen here in this picture, as well as San Jose, Redwood City, and here we go again, Washington State. I actually took this picture in a classification office at the King County Jail in Seattle in the 1990s. I was told by Washington DOC that he had stabbed an 18th Street member while he was in their custody, and while he was in our jail, it was very much up on the northern structure as I monitored his communication in Colorado, Washington and Khalifas, as seen by the Welga bird here on his back. And just make sure he was making his rounds. He also did time in the federal BOP under number 15131-013. I believe after he got done with the King County Jail time, he was returned to the Santa Clara County Jail in San Jose on a dope case, where I believe he got 20 months and was returned to CDC when I lost track of him. There was a Frank Lucero, who I think may have been out of Stockton. I'm not sure what his B number was, but his DOB was September 8, 1953. Understand that he was killed on July 10, 1982 by Joe Lucero. I'm not sure if that was a family dispute or an NF-ordered hit. There was Larry Coneo Lucero out of Salas, 
but also had ties to Gilroy. I show he actually was born in New Mexico. I understand he was arrested for multiple dope charges in 1985 and 1986. He was arrested for assault with a deadly weapon in 1988, whereby he did one a time. I believe then he was remanded to the adult system under D number 80255 when he became of age. I show that he was housed at Pelican Bay State Prison in 1998 and was released to the Calle. I show that he held the keys to Gilroy in the year 2011. I show that he was rearrested and returned to CDC custody under B number, as in Bravo, J as in Joseph, 8. 380, and is currently housed at Sentinel State Prison. There was a James Diablo Lugo, who was out of Southern California, and was affiliated with the NF under B number 60186. I showed that he was housed at Folsom State Prison in 1971, as well as Soledad. I showed then he was hit on September 7, 1972, at CMF Vacaville. Understand that he was arrested for a bank robbery in March of 1977 and sent to the BOP but I understand was murdered on February 11, 1978 at McNeil Island by either the Aryan Brotherhood or the Mexican Mafia. There was a Julio Lugo out of Ventura County. Show had B number 23841 and was affiliated with the NF in the early 1970s. He was housed at CTF Soledad in 1972 when he was murdered by Aryan Brotherhood member Mickey Manier on behalf of the MA. There was Manuel, a.k.a. Old Man, a.k.a. Smiley Lujan, at a West Side Modesto, but also show had ties to Amarillo, Texas. He was born in 1958 and affiliated with the NF in the late 1970s. In the 1980s, he was incarcerated under D number 89157, but was off that number by at least 1997. I show then he was arrested by the feds and given BOP number 30527-177 and was housed at the Phoenix facility for many years, where he was known as being the number one NF slash Northern Structure Maestro, and schooled individuals like Billy Rebel Villarreal, as seen here. Understand that Luhan was housed at Coleman in 2009 through 2014, and is currently housed at Florence High. He is scheduled for release this year in September 2024. And finally, we have... Samuel Luna Marquez, a.k.a. Wero, who's out of San Ho, but also show has ties to Richmond. He's a very interesting individual. He was considered to be a Northern Structure Associate in the 1990s under J number 97489. My understanding is that he wanted to be an F, but was denied, and believe it or not, ended up associating with the New Flowers. However, understand he was moving a lot of dope via the Sinaloa cartel, and became associated with Chuco Guillen, whereby he was considered to be part of Chuco's security squad, and was allowed to come back and made one of Chuco's captains. Of course, Chuco was a main member of the state faction of the NF, which did not bid well for Luna amongst the federal faction. But very clearly, you can see he wears his NF tats proudly now. He ended up being indicted on the RICO case and I believe is currently housed in Atwater with other NF from the state faction that I believe are currently waiting to transfer to other BOP facilities. Before we go, I'd like to express just a few lessons going through life. We all make mistakes, some of us more than others. I know I've made my share. I know many family members that have been caught up in the legal system and have done time behind bars. I guess you could say that I myself did over 30 years behind the walls, although I got to go home every night. I often think of how lucky I was, and if I didn't make a few important life choices, I easily could have been in there like some of my family members and friends were. Life is all about choices. Be real careful. I know it's hard sometimes, especially when you're young, but slow down. Be real careful before you proceed, because things can happen very quickly and escalate out of your control. Sometimes saying no is being more of a man. Some of my lessons are in my book, The Life and Times of About the Local if you want to check that out. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you return to continue watching more in this series. For now, this is Gabe Morales signing off. Gangsters, cops, and politicians. If I go forward, follow me. If I hesitate, push me. If they, I am a kill me, avenge me. If I am a traitor, kill me. Gangsters, cops, and politicians, get ready to rock. We're on a mission. Each one of us shares our own vision.